Hello. I guess it's just not quite four o'clock, so I kind of opened did this video a little earlier. All right. So I am just doing this in my group, Women Living Boldly 50 Plus. And I'm also going to post this on YouTube. So wherever you're watching this from, and I may post it on my uh, regular Facebook page, hello and welcome to this video. I recently did a, um, let's make sure it's in my group, a seven day morning ritual practice experience thing and it was really successful and um, so over the seven days I first first welcome video kind of first video I kind of went over a general way of doing a morning practice and then for the seven days I took kind of shared different things you could include in your morning practice and then you could give them a try see how you like them and then you could also go at hmm what do I want to try what do I want to add into my morning practice or how do I want to do this and it was um, you got to see how powerful it was and how powerful these energy hi Kate how powerful it is to live more intentionally and mindful and consciously this is the thing and what we're going to talk about today um, is I'm going to go over the seven days kind of what I talked about for those that weren't there or a refresher and then I'm going to we're going to also talk about um, how most people live and go about their day and why how that affects you we don't realize how we are living on autopilot or how we are just continually repeating the same patterns habits actions thoughts words stories all of the excuses whatever so we're keeping our life the way it is now like we're, we're, we're staying there and also not taking time for you right um, when a person doesn't take time for themselves they lose contact or connection with yourself you may feel like I don't know what I want I don't even really know what I desire I, d I don't know I'm just eating because I'm stressed I'm emotional you're not really able to tune into your body and know when you're really hungry and know when you're just eating out of those bad habits and feeling stressed and so you don't tend to take care of yourself it's like you put everything out everybody else first and yourself last and if you have time I'll do this if I have time I'll do this for myself one day I'll start to meditate one day I'll start to do something that I love one day I'll figure out what I want to do with my life one I'm not fulfilled now but I don't even know what I want to do right all these things that kind of are where most people are and that's really sad you can end up feeling exhausted depleted frustrated bitter resentful in your life because you're waiting for it to change I'm waiting for something to happen I'm waiting till I have time and the problem with that is it probably won't happen right when you're just waiting when you're just waiting for something outside of you to change you're having to rely on other people or circumstances to change that's very disempowering that's not really being in your power because you're you're like other people's things the life my life outside of me is going to determine how I feel and that's not the way we want that's the way we have been living possibly for years and years that's the way we've been taught that's the way we've seen other people live but that's not right I'm just posting now in my Facebook group so let me know if you're watching the replay I'd love to say hello if you're watching live let me know you're watching live and I would love to say hello okay so all right so what I covered in the seven days we're just gonna review it very quick is and the welcome kind of the start at the thing I talked about how you can start your day it will even take like three minutes and this will make a huge time and that's just laying in bed connecting to your heart connecting to your body taking some deep breaths starting your day in an intentional way and in, in a state of gratitude uh, breathing connecting to your body really tuning in right that is one of the best ways to start you don't even have that's not it that's even before you get out of bed so know that you can start this that quick that easy everybody can do it there is no excuse right 
And then on day one, I talked more about this and I went into how you can structure your morning practice. That's in day one of the seven days. All these videos are still up in the group and on YouTube. Day number two, I talked about I am statements and I choose statements. That's again, regaining your power, knowing that you are the one who's in power. You are the one that gets to make these decisions for yourself. You are the ones who start making the changes and shifts. Day three was asking for guidance. How to ask for guidance when you feel stuck, when you feel uncertain. And right, because then that helps you know, I have faith, trust that I'm going to hear the answer, that I know the answer, that the answer is going to come to me. Day number four, we did a breathing and grounding meditation, which everybody loved and is extremely powerful. Day number five, intention setting. Because if you don't set intentions for your day, you're just going to allow other people's stuff to come in, take over. And before you know it, it's like, whose life am I living, right? I'm just responding and reacting to everybody around me. I don't even know. I, I'm not even planning or living my real life. Uh, number six, day number six, we talked about scripting, which is a really powerful journaling technique about creating and really designing a life you love and how you can get into the feeling of it. Um, so it's kind of like the law of attraction, the manifestation part of that. And then day number seven, I talked about using um, books and oracle cards and stuff to give you messages for the day, to tune into positive things and to really learn and change your perception. Um, yeah, have a different view on life, open up to possibilities and opportunities that could be there for you. So that was the seven days, um, which like were all fantastic, all fantastic. So I highly suggest you go back and watch those when you have time, when you want to do this. But there's another thing too. I'm going to also let you know today how you can continue on with this. And we're going to do four times seven. So four weeks, each seven days, you're going to have something you're working through. So this, like we did through the seven day morning practice, then it goes into different um, seven days of another thing, seven days of another thing. It's kind of like little mini boot camps or little mini challenges that'll keep you focused on you, taking time for you, improving yourself, um, even your moving your body, eating the foods and all of that. So really tuning in, taking care of yourself, getting to know yourself, understanding your body and connecting to it all. Okay, so the way most people live their life is on autopilot, like we talked about. And when you live on autopilot like that, um, you lose touch with yourself. And I think most, so many women in midlife beyond whatever have lived taking care of other people for so long. And when, if you work full time too, you know that when you get to your job, the focus so much is outside of yourself. And then as we get into this next phase of life, hello, whoever is watching, say hello. We get into this where we're like, I don't even know what I want. I don't even know what I would pick. Uh, or you're feeling little helpless or like, it's too late for me. I don't see what's possible for me. Um, I'm feeling blah. I'm feeling a bit bored. I just want to watch TV at night or I just snack all night. Why do I snack all night? I can't stay consistent with healthy eating. Um, I start something, then I stop and I sabotage. It's because of the unawareness and unconscious way that you're living your life, right? We're just continually repeating bad habits, bad behaviors. And not that they're all bad or that you're doing all bad. It's just... <laughs> You know, when we say to ourselves, oh, I wish things could be different, or I wish I could stick with this, or why can't I, right? This is why, because we don't have this mindfulness or living more, we're not living consciously during the day. We're not finding time to tune into us and really explore who we are, what we want, um, how our body's really feeling, how certain things affect our body. You know, and even enough to be like, where are these thoughts coming from? Where are my limiting beliefs coming from? Why do I really think that about me? It, could something else be possible for me, right? So you realize, oh my God, I'm not, I thought I'd be living a different life by now, or I thought I'd be on a different track, or I thought I'd be further along than now, or I thought I'd be happier. I thought that when I had time for me, I, you know, when my kids grew up, I'd finally be happy. I'd be able to do things for me. And now you're discovering that's not, that hasn't happened because you haven't changed. You haven't 
made it happen yet, but that's okay, right? That's okay. Because it's just this habit of letting other people's stuff. We're so used to focusing outside of ourselves, right? And your old beliefs are running the show. I need to be like this for other people. I need to handle other people's stuff. I can't let go of control. Oh my God, they're going to make mistakes if I'm not there to tell them what to do. I won't, I don't trust them to do this. Or maybe yourself. I've given up on healthy eating. I don't trust myself. I don't follow through. I've tried. I've stopped. I've sabotaged. I've gone on it. I've lost weight. Then I gained it all back. Right? It's this continuous back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And then seeing when you have these old beliefs and you're just living the old beliefs, the old habits, you don't see what could be possible for you. Right? Oh, my God. What if this could be possible for me? Right. And you start dreaming and believing and thinking about it. And then these doubts come in and you're like, oh, my God. I don't think I can do that. Right. When we go to open ourselves up to possibilities and think about what could be there for us. If we don't stick with that and continue to practice our belief continue to maybe change some habits, maybe start to change. If we don't continue that or continue in the practice of it, the old ways of thinking, believing, talking, behaving will come back. They'll come back, right? They're really hardwired. It's like deep ruts in a road, right? We get the more we drive down that road, the deeper the ruts. So if you think about us women here over 50, <laughs> we have lived the same way or done the same things or thought the same things and said the same things for years and years and years. Our parents said them, our mother said them, our aunts said them, our cousins said them, other women around us. We're just so rooted in these ruts lots of times. And when you try to get out of it, it's a struggle. But if you do, it's like celebration, I'm doing this. But then, right, something pulls your attention away and you fall back into the ruts. Like when people say life happened, life happens. You get pulled back into the ruts and the ruts are easy. The rut is riding along on those ruts. It's easy. It's comfortable, even though you're not comfortable, <laughs> right? It's like this discomfort, you know how to handle because uh, the unknown What's on the other side of these ruts? What's up there when I get out of the ruts? You don't know. And the, it's so funny because the older we get, the more comfortable we are staying, we get staying where we are and in the kind of ruts, you know, the ruts kind of things we're in. Because the effort seems like so much effort. And we're always going back to our past. I tried before and I failed. I tried before and I didn't stick with it. Because we don't have a future or something to that that is known, right? Because we haven't got there yet. There's no plan that's guaranteed. There's We can't see the future go, oh yeah, there I am. See, doing that, right? There's no proof or evidence that we can do it. And so sometimes we're just like, yeah, I probably couldn't do it anyways. It probably will never happen for me. I might as well just give up, especially I'm 60 now. And that is something I deal with too. It's like, oh my God, like you're already 60. What are you going to do? So these things, these ways of feeling are common and most people are there. But what I want to get you to believe in and start is to know you can feel so much better about your life, even if. The outside of your life doesn't change a lot by making these little practices and taking time for you and taking time to explore different things that you're not used to thinking about or acting like or doing, you know, getting into these little habitual things um, that allow you to have a deeper connection to you, your body and really believe, start building that faith, trust and belief in yourself that, oh my God, maybe I can make this possible in my life. Oh, now I kind of starting to feel and be aware of what I really would like, right? I'm being, I'm opening up and I'm seeing now, oh my God, that would be fantastic for me. That is something I'd love to do. 
That is where I'm feeling passionate about. And when we start to feel those things again, we that gives us energy, right? It gives us energy. When we are giving out, hello to those people who have joined me. Go back to the beginning and watch from the beginning when this is over. Um, I know I'm kind of going quite fast. I'm respectful of your time. So we're loading a lot in here. But when you don't take that time for you like a morning practice, and why I'm on this morning practice um, thing right now is because that is the easiest way to start. If we don't do it first thing in the morning and we tell ourselves we're going to wait till later, later never really happens. Usually never happens. The easiest practice to bring in is something first thing in the morning. And yes, before you go to bed, some people may say, can I do it before I go to bed? You can, but I would prefer if you do it for sure in the morning and even do it a little bit before you go to bed because nothing is guaranteed as the day goes on. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> um, so when you don't have this morning practice, you're not tuning into you. So you're not paying attention to your body. So this is why, and a lot of times, people don't eat healthy or don't stay consistent because they're out of touch with even how their body feels. They're so in autopilot and just doing what they need to do to survive, doing what they need to do to get through their day because they keep telling themselves they have no time for themselves anyways. And so then you begin to feel a little bit like, what's the point? What's the point? I, I'm never going to lose this weight or I'm never going to be able to do this. So I'm just going to eat this way because it's easy. It's simple. It's fast. It's what I know. It doesn't make any difference anyways. All those stories start to happen for women, especially. Instead of, okay, all those things are just excuses and stories and ways that have been in the past. I'm choosing to believe there's something different for me. I'm choosing to believe that there's more possibilities and opportunities. I'm choosing to believe that I can find something that's going to help me to feel so much better. This affects your mood, your health, um, and your soul and your spirit, right? If you never really allow yourself to relax or even allow your body to know what it feels like to relax, what happens is you stay in this state of stress, your nervous system. And that affects every organ of your body and it affects every system of your body, your hormonal system, your digestive system, all this, your heart, your lungs, your liver, everything, right? Um, your adrenal glands, your thyroid, those are big, big, big things, um, glands that are affected by this staying in the stress state. And when you believe, I just have to, there's no way I can slow down, there's no way I can do this thing, that is hopelessness. And when we don't have hope, that is why there's so much depression. And that's why people, you know, commit suicide and stuff because they don't have hope. They don't have faith. They can't see how things will get better. And I'm not saying it's that bad for you, but I'm just saying this is what can happen if you don't take that time to connect to you to really feel like, okay, I get to have the spaciousness. I get to give myself some time for me. I get to feel my body. I get to breathe. I get to fully relax. Your nervous system can relax. Your systems in your body begin to work better, begin to work better, right? Which improves your health and improves your moods, your emotions, and your energy levels. If you're giving out energy all the time but not replenishing, you're going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel tired. You're not going to have energy for other things. Then you're going to think it's because of age. It's because this is just the way it is. And that's what people think. You don't have to have that. When you stuck emotions, when you don't feel your emotions, when you're not moving through them, when you're not giving yourself time, when you're not listening to your body, to your soul, the emotions get shoved down. The energy within your body gets blocked and stuck and stagnant. It doesn't flow through your body. So your life force energy is what we're talking about. So many people are walking around with low energy and feeling half dead and not really feeling alive and not really feeling excited about life because their life force energy is not flowing through them. They have blockages. They have stuck energy, right? 
and they don't realize that can be changed. So you got to realize that can be changed, right? There's easy breathing things you can do to help open up that energy. There's posture things. There's moving your body. Just giving your body the time and space to feel relaxed again. Your body may not even know what it feels like to fully let go and relax. And that's what you want to give it time, right? Um, right, we, we can feel bitter, the frustration. I'll never have time for me. I don't know why I don't have time for me. I don't understand this. This is so crazy. Why does everybody need things from me? That is just the life you happen to set up. It's time to change that. Um, I'm just repeating this. Keeps, yeah, you'll just keep stuck in that cycle of feeling stuck, frustrated, into sabotage, on again, off again, kind of feeling like, I don't think I can do this. Why am I even trying to eat healthy? It doesn't work anyways. All of that. I have no time to exercise. I'm sore. And sore muscles and symptoms of your body that are uncomfortable are often and usually always caused by these stuffed down emotions and how our body do, can't deal with the emotions and the there's no quite energy flow. Your body can't heal properly if your energy is not flowing properly, right? So what I want to also talk about is how to... When you begin to be conscious in the morning, exactly what that does for you in your body and how you can bring that into your day. So you might be thinking, some people might think, how can a morning practice or just doing this change my life? Change everything. Hello, those have popped on, but he's popping on, popping up. Um, how it can change your life and change everything is because you're starting the practice of being mindful and conscious. So now you're beginning to see the excuses you use. You're beginning to see the patterns you have. You're beginning to um, see, oh my God, I just continued with this bad habit. Like I didn't even think about it. I just thought it was the only way I had to be or could be or it was just easy for me. And you begin to consciously make choices like, okay, I'm not going to follow that way anymore. I'm choosing to do this now. I'm choosing to do this now. I'm choosing to do this now, right? Like every day you're making a conscious choice of now what you desire instead of just staying in old beliefs, habits, and behaviors. So first thing in the morning when you give yourself time, um, and there's various morning practices that you do can that just can open you up, can help your body relax. It's like a feeling of, oh, yeah, and I'm going to tune in. What does my body feel? What does my body need? Um, what is my soul asking me, asking of me? What does my soul want? And that's those little nudges, right? Like when you continually are irritated by something, there's something wrong there. That's not good. Right? <laughs> but yeah, we don't try to change within us or realize what that is. So it's just opening up to, okay, this is not working in my life. I'm deciding I'm going to try this instead. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to practice this thing. Oh my God, when I'm practicing this, it feels amazing. It feels wonderful. I can see how this can make a big difference in my life. Wow, I'm noticing how much better I'm feeling, right? When you start your day more positive and more conscious, it's like, oh, I can choose my emotion right now, right? I felt that I was falling into stress, frustration. I don't want to go here. I don't want to do work. It's going to be another crazy day. What you're doing there is you're telling yourself how you're going to feel today. And you're telling yourself what you're going to experience today. Oh, it's probably going to be like this today. It's probably going to be bad. This person is probably going to be like this. It's going to be so hard. I've got a million things to do. I'm going to be exhausted by the end of the day. Do you see what I mean? You already are directing your life you, your morning practice right now is contributing to the stress overwhelm exhaustion that you're feeling because you're telling yourself you're going to experience those things right so you don't want to be telling yourself the wrong things you want to be telling yourself the right things and that's what morning practices do they get you in the habit 
of focusing on a building, right? These ha new habits, new ways of thinking, new ways of speaking, new ways your body's relaxing into relaxation. Your body's, you're coming more in tune with your body. It's like, oh, so you take better care of yourself. You have the awareness to take better care of yourself. Right? And that's why a lot of people say, when I get stressed and overwhelmed, I eat all this crap because you're outside yourself. You're outside and you're, you're allowing that stressful state to be the way it is. And the only way you know you're coping, the only way you know how to cope is to eat or to drink, whatever, right? So when you start these morning practices, it opens up awareness. It gives you other coping mechanisms to deal with things in your life, in all aspects of your life, at any time of your life, any time during the day. So that you no longer have to fall back into those bad habits that don't serve you and are not healthy for you. Right? That's why these morning practices are so powerful because they get you practicing things that can help you in every single aspect of your life. And when you do start to do them in the morning and notice how much awareness you have now and how much more mindful you are and conscious you are, you start to make choices and make decisions that are better for you. And when you do that, you see your life start to change. And then you feel the differences. You see the difference in the world around you, right? And then it's like, oh my God, you that's where this is the lasting change. This is like you the changes begin to happen. You open up to possibilities and opportunities because you're now like, oh wow, I never even noticed this before. I didn't even think this was possible. Does anybody have any questions? I know this I might be only a couple people on here because I can't tell um, through this, but I don't see any comments. I would love to hear, even if you're watching the replay. I would love to have any comments you have. Can you relate to anything I said? Can you see how these practices can carry on into your day? And so when you get really clear and good on doing the morning practice, then during the day you can stop. When you're feeling this overwhelmed, you're taking away, you're just reacting, you're responding, something triggers you. You can stop and go, oh, it's okay. I see what's happening. I know how to tune in. And it only takes minutes, right? I know how to tune in. I can calm myself. I can calm my nervous system. I know how to handle this. I can trust myself to not fall apart right now. <laughs> I trust myself that I have tools, techniques, and practices to do where I can feel better in just a little bit. Or you can just stop and you can just look at the situation that's happening around you more like an observer. Hmm, interesting. This would have really bothered me in the past, but now I'm much calmer. I'm much more focused. And now I can attack it, attack it like this. When you are in a stress state, it shuts down your creativity. It shuts down your problem solving. So if you stay in a stress state most of the day and something comes up, you're like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. You're just so busy reacting. You can't see how to solve the problem or can't come up with a creative solution for it. You can't, that's very, very, very hard in a stressed out, overwhelmed state. But we don't have to stay in those states. When, our, when we know and our body knows how to get out of, how to calm down, then when we do, ah, now I know what to do. Oh, I know how to handle this now. I can see how I can handle this better. Oh my God, this is so right. Okay, it's okay. I don't have to let this upset me so much. I see it, right? So you start to be calmer, you start to have more energy during the day because you're not just giving, giving, you're every day you're replenishing some of your energy, right? You're replenishing you, filling up your cup with these morning practices. 
So you're feeling replenished. You're feeling like you're giving yourself this time and space every day. So you're not as bitter, resentful, frustrated. <laughs> you have more energy. You're breathing and things different. So your life force is now flowing through you so much easier. For one, the healthier body is going to be better. The state of your being, your emotions, your moods are going to be better. You're going to be, be take better care of yourself because you're going to be more mindful and conscious what you're eating, how you're moving your body, what energy you're allowing into your life, you know, how you're reacting, responding to other people. All of those things begin to change. And you can actually sense and feel your body. So what your body's feeling will give you a message and you're more able to hear the message. And you know how a lot of people say, or a lot of things happen to somebody, let's say, and it's like, oh my God, I felt, I didn't even notice that could happen, right? All of a sudden a cancer diagnosis or all of a sudden some diagnosis. It's been happening for a very long time and your body has probably been trying to tell you, but you weren't listening because we were detached from our body and not willing to take the time to learn how to tune into our body or to learn to, to how to relax our nervous system and really be in the moments and be in the body and feel and start to make positive changes in our life. Because when you're not doing anything like those types of practices, then it's just whatever's happening out here and you're disconnected from you and you're connected to everything and everybody outside of you. So you are being neglected inside. Okay. And all illness, disease, elements, anything like that, symptoms can be brought back to stress within the body. And I'm not just talking work stress or it's like your body's under stress. Because you're not taking care of it properly or not listening to it and not hearing it and not even aware of what it's going through, right? So that's how po powerful these practices are. That's why I'm so passionate about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm having, um, this is a great idea I had. Seven days, four times. Seven days of one thing, seven days another, seven days, seven days to take care of your body, mind, and soul. Four weeks of these seven day so you take you take it in seven days right the first seven days will work on developing your morning practice that's right for you that fits into your life and you practice that for seven days then the next seven days which is week number two we do the body part which is focusing on consciously connecting to your body what does my body feel like what does my body feel like eating what feels right for my body i'm going to treat my body good and then moving your body Every day, I'm going to move my body in a positive way. I may do some stretching. I may do a walk. I'm going to go outside and breathe in this beautiful environment and do a gratitude walk, right? Things like that. I'm going to have water and a smoothie and a salad every day. So week two is focused on nourishing your body. Week number three is nourishing your mind. We'll do about journaling and scripting, visualization, and talk more about really being the one who's designing and creating your life. And then week number four, it's about your spirit and your soul and honoring your soul. What is it telling you? How to tap into your intuition. How to connect to what your soul and your spirit wants and your heart wants in your life. Talking about the chakras and that energy that flows through your body. So this is what we want to go into next. It'll be third. It'll be four weeks of these seven day blocks. And then after the four weeks, we'll probably do one full week of integration. And you will see, you will be like different. You will have experienced a totally different life, basically. Right? When else have you spent blocks of time so focused on those aspects? But the thing is, is that it's in your life, right? It's not like you take hours a day. No, 
It's like I'm being more conscious. I'm just, oh, wow, while I'm living my life, while I'm going through my day, these are my focuses. So it fits in with your life already, basically. But the morning practice is where it starts, right? It's where it starts, and that gains more awareness, and we're just going to build and build on the awareness and on the, your whole body, body, mind, and soul. So you're doing practices for your body, mind, and soul. That's health. That's holistic health. It's not just about your body. It's not just about the mindset, right? It's about taking care of all of you, of tuning in and getting, because it's one entity. We are all one, right? We are one. And, but often we have separated it, right? I'm going to just eat healthy, but then we don't have the mindset that works with it. So we keep sabotaging. Right. You may be working like crazy on your business, building wealth, making lots of money, but you don't have good relationships or you're not eating healthy because you tell yourself you don't have time because you're too busy to making money and just surviving. Right. So unless we approach it in a holistic way, we don't ever feel like have more of a balance. We don't ever feel totally healthy. So this is a great place to start. And that's what the next thing is. And I will be posting about that, but also contact me and say, Diana, I'd like to know more about this. I'm interested in this and it'll be a good price. I'm thinking two different prices. It'll be um, $77 for a few days and then it's going up to maybe $197. So this is what we're doing. Just because I want the people to be like, yes, I'm in. I want to do it. Let's do it. Then you take fast action. I'm going to tell you that we're going to make it work in your life. I will be there to help you. I mean, because I'm the one leading it anyways. <laughs> It'll be in a Facebook group and it possibly might have a Zoom. Um, but it's just practice. You get to practice. And there's always replays of the videos, which will be, uh, there's always, and they also, be, also will go privately up on YouTube, right? So that not everybody can see them. Does anybody have any questions? I know people have been coming and going, and so it's kind of fun like that. But this replay is up for you to watch, and I highly suggest you listen to it again. Just listen to it and take in all I've said, which is a lot, and it can feel like, oh, my God. Wow. You realize I have not been living very consciously or mindful, mindfully. Right. And the way the world's changing the universe and whatever, all of it, this is what we're being called to do because of the energy change, because of the way the world is changing. You might really be one of those people who can truly see that if you don't start taking care of yourself, no one else will. Right. No one's going to all of a sudden come in and give you permission to take care of you or give you extra time in a day. You are the one who do, does that for you. It's about taking full responsibility, but that's the power of it. It's like, I have the power to do this for me. I'm going to stand in my power. I'm going to learn what this is all about. I'm going to learn how to do this. Be more mindful. Be more conscious. Learn to tune into my body. And then you know. Then you don't have to keep ask, asking outside of yourself. You will know how to take better care of yourself, and you will, right? Okay, well, that is my message for today, and it was a loaded one. Thank you so much for all of those who are here live, and for those who watched the replay. Please comment below. Give me a like. Give me a love. Feel free. To, oh, I can't share this video yet, but I will be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube, and I might put it on my personal page too, I think, because um, I thought there was a lot of great information I shared. And so this next, moving into the next, into the four week will be in my Take Charge of Your Life group. So that's what we're going to transition it into. Remember, four times seven, four weeks of these seven day kind of practices and experiences. So you're focused on one, you know, so it's just focusing on what's ahead of you for that one week. And then when that week's done, then we move on to the second week. And there's your focus there. So it keeps you really focused, really on point, 
with accountability and um, support and support while you're going through this. Okay. Let me know if you want more information right now. Ah, okay, Ty. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and watching. And uh, so much love to you. And reach out to me. I'm here for you. Okay, bye. I can't get to my end button because something's... There we go.